Dzień dobry Państwu, good evening everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you to our guests uh, and commentator uh, for coming. Uh, from through, through getting through a long distance to get here to Warsaw to present uh, your current research. Uh, the seminar today that is titled History, Memory, Politics, uh, New Perspectives from the Baltic Region uh, is part of a longer series of seminars that was initiated uh, within the project Genealogies of Memory in Central and Eastern Europe uh, held at the European Network Remembrance and Solidarity. Uh, I will just uh, remind or inform you that uh, we have initiated this project in 2011 and so far we have held uh, th three international conferences uh, and are pl planning another one. I will invite you to that one at the, at the end of our session. Uh, and within the project we also started a series of seminars like today where we invite scholars and representatives of uh, other so-called memory schools or memory uh, research centers or scholars representing memory research in various regions uh, in Europe with focus on Central and Eastern Europe to present their current research so that we, are, uh, we can stay in touch and learn what's new in the world and <laughs> uh, in our neighboring uh, countries too. So today we will uh, present research from the Baltic region and we will have uh, three speakers, uh, Martin Skaprans from University of Tartu, Heiko Pabo from University of Tartu too, and Felix Ackermann from European Humani Humanities University in Vilna. And those three presentations will be followed by uh, commentary, uh, by comments from Martin, uh, Dr. Martin Niemojewski from Warsaw University. So let's start with the first speaker, uh, Martin Skaprans, who will present on the the institutionalization of social memory research in Latvia. Uh, Martin Skaprans is a postdoctoral researcher at Institute of Government and Politics at University of Tartu in Estonia. He did his PhD in 2012 in communication studies from University of Latvia. Uh, between 2010 and 2012, he was researcher at Advanced Social and Political Research Institute, University of Latvia. His research interest is in memory politics and mnemonic practices of post-communist societies and within this he published a book in 2012 on the commemoration of Soviet deportations, memory politics and public sphere which is in Latvian. He's also a co-editor of uh, another book, The Last War Communicating Trauma, uh, also in Latvian. So now the floor is yours, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I'm really grateful to the network of gen genealogies of memory. And uh, so my presentation or my talk today won't be so much that I will present some, some fresh research results. It will be more to give you an overview of what's happening in Latvia in terms of social memory studies. So uh, it's quite, quite, quite challenging actually, you know, to cover all the field what's happening, but I'll do my best. So. Uh, First of all, of course, when we speak about memory studies in the post-communist area, in particular in the Baltic states, it's not just about uh, the, the establishment of interdisciplinary research field, but it also tells a lot about the whole mnemonic landscape in those countries. And therefore, when we speak about memory studies and try to trace how it has developed since the 1990s, we can also or we should contextualize it with, within a broader field, because usually, especially I, as I will try to demonstrate in terms of Latvia, you can see these inter, this interaction between, for example, mnemonic politics or memory politics uh, and uh, how the 
how the field of social memory studies develops or has developed up to now. So, uh, and uh, therefore we can say, of course, that uh, memory studies and memory per se uh, is still a crucial defining uh, feature of post-communist societies. I think Richard Sakwa, a political scientist who published in the 1990s the book Post-Communism, uh, had this uh, thesis that by what, what do we understand by post-communist societies? One of the stable structural features that define post-communist societies is their memory work or intensive memory work and with the past, with the recent past. And I think that it is still a very important indicator or feature that defines or delineates, maybe, if you like, um, post-communist societies from, from other societies. Uh, so, uh, therefore, uh, first of all, I, I'll try to show you maybe some general trends that have taken place in Latvia in memory studies, in social memory studies and in memory studies in general, uh, and the research. Uh, and uh, so, um, first of all, um, in the 1990s, and that, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not characteristic just of Latvia, but I would say, I would argue that it's characteristic, and not just me is arguing that, it's, that some scholars have argued that, that memory, me, 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 mnemonic work or memory, memory studies of the research discipline in the 1990s was very much uh, embedded in a, in, a, in a biographical research in, post, in, in many post-communist societies. And uh, if you look, for example, at the Baltic states, of course, the absolute leader or, 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 or champion in biographical studies uh, was Estonia, which uh, organized or scholars, of Estonian scholars were very active in, 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 in carrying out different research projects in the, 19, in the early 1990s. Uh, but you can see also within the Czech Republic, in Poland perhaps, also in some other countries, that this biographical work, I mean academic biographical work, was, was actually dominating the field of memory studies very much. But particularly in the Baltic states, it was very common. And, um, and uh, it's, in, it's important to, 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 to emphasize that, uh, that uh, this memory or this biographical, biographical research basically focused on, 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 on victims' experience. Uh, sometimes also on some, on, 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 on uh, perpetrators, not perpetrators, but, uh, but uh, uh, resistance experience, but never did it focus on uh, so much on everyday life uh, of, of, say, of, of com communist era, since that it was focused basically on communist era. And it should de it, the task was to deal with with uh, with this uh, recent uh, legacy. So, and uh, just many books in Latvia were published then, actually, uh, which uh, reflected or actually on very descriptive level just published these life stories, uh, which were collected during several uh, uh, comprehensive, large expeditions to countryside collecting uh, life stories, collecting experience, which as I told you, was focused on this victim's experience. And uh, of course, that very much, very much uh, reflects uh, the general, uh, general mnemonic landscape of the 1990s of, in Latvia. This is a period, typical transitional, oh, this is a period, or traditional period where, where uh, this victimization discourse, of course, the victimization discourse uh, prevailed very much, and also in academic, uh, in academic, in scholarly, in scholarly uh, research or in scholarly discourse, you could f see this uh, dominance of uh, of of victim vict victim topics or victim oriented topics. So and. Uh, in the 1990s, and it has continued up to now, actually, but uh, most salient it was in the 1990s. Uh, large collections of life stories uh, were created uh, by several institutions in Latvia, by the Institute of Philosophy and, and Sociology. They created, and it's an ongoing process, they, they created the most comprehensive, it's called National Oral History Project, and they have a large archive already now consisting of more than four thousand 
live stories, so 4,000 units recorded, transcribed, and then each you know, researcher who wants to work with that, uh, whatever discipline he represents, he can use it, and, he, and it's like it functions now as, a, as an empirical basis for many researchers. And it has, of course, also cultural value. Um, also, Museum of, Occup of the Occup Occupation of Latvia has collected more than 2,000 vi video, uh, video uh, testimonies, as they call them, video testimonies. Some of them are more than nine hours long, uh, like several interviews conducted. Um, and also, Dogopils University, which is in the eastern south of Latvia, uh, also has a very maybe more regionally focused on Latgales region, but also very, very comprehensive collection of life stories. And that's, this tradition was established in the 1990s, of course. And uh, when we look at this research, which has, has been done in terms of this tradition, or in terms of this paradigm, biographical paradigm, we can see that uh, individual experience and self-identity, so to say, was chosen as a primary analytical lens or departuring point, how to interpret uh, what's, what's happening with the memory in society. So individual experience and self-identity was the major frame of reference usually. And as a result, such concepts as social identity, as a shared perception of history, or collective representation of history were rather somewhere in periphery. It had a peripheral character in, in the research. And therefore, uh, analytically, it, 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 it wasn't uh, explored at a great extent, to a great extent. Uh, but I, I'm, I would argue that in the late 1990s, even if you want, be, want to be very precise, in uh, 1998, uh, it was a turning point. It was a turning point, for, first of all, for memory politics, not just for Latvia, but for Baltic states. Mm -hmm. But also it was, uh, uh, it was a turning point uh, for, 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 for memory studies in Latvia. And why? Why so? Uh, because in the 1998, um, um, there were several important processes going on. Uh, First of all, uh, it was, uh, Latvia was very, aspire, very, very determined to enter or to join two most important organizations, the EU, the European Union, and NATO. And uh, there was a clear, not very explicit, but clear pressure from both of these organizations through diplomatic channels to revise the official attitude towards the recent past. And uh, namely, it meant that you should democratize, you should focus more also on Holocaust crimes. And uh, so basically it was uh, these all reservations coming unofficially, implicitly maybe sometimes, from, from, the, from diplomatic, through diplomatic channels, were focused on revising uh, the perspective on the 1940s. So, and that was an impetus, not just for policy makers, but also for researchers, actually, that something is wrong, maybe, or there should be another agenda, maybe, or another agenda or another angle should be bro brought in uh, in scholarly discourse. An important turning point also is, or what illustrates that it, it is an important turning point, was the establishment of so-called uh, of, of the Commission of Historians of Latvia. Similar uh, commissions were established also in the, in the same year in uh, Lithuania and in uh, Estonia. And all of them more or less, uh, uh, their main mission was to, to, to research uh, the two totalitarian dictatorships of the 1940s. Or although, of course, uh, communist era, we can speak about 50 years dictatorship. But like, the focus was, first of all, on the 1940s. But in Latvia, so it was established in 1998, Historians Commission, and, uh, and 
also uh, we could we could uh, if, you, if you if you try to trace how how the scholarly discourse develops uh, or start to develop in that time and uh, then you can notice also some first publications uh, first serious conceptual discussions uh, in the late 1990s uh, when uh, scholars uh, try to reflect on the social dimension of memory not so much uh, on individual that was already kind of you know trend but to try to 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 to, to see it more broadly or to 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 to, to try to uh, extract this uh, or try to uh, look at this individual experience through very social concepts and phenomenon and uh, there was a book published in the 1998 see it's judging from the cover it has been quite often used uh, I just because it's now bi bi bibliographical was it rarité you know uh, not so easy to get in Latvia uh, but uh, so I went specially to library to 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 to, to, to take a picture of this uh, of this cover but uh, it became a sort of a path breaking book uh, not very thick but conceptually important for Latvian memory studies where say more social anthropologists than sociologists uh, and try to bring in such concepts of social memory as like try to discuss about uh, these concepts how they could be applied in Latvian scholarship so um, and then uh, when we look at the last or past decade the 2000s uh, we can see uh, rather vibrant uh, or uh, lively debates and uh, research uh, done in terms of the tradition of social memory studies or if we go back to Halbox we can say of collective memory studies one of the most salient perspectives uh, that emerged um, or has emerged in the in the past decade is what I call a cultural communicative perspective which is which was which was established by, by one scholar, uh, by Professor Vita Zelce. Uh, they're sometimes also called that there's sort of Zelce circle, that there were some really, really uh, scholars who were very, were very much attracted by this cultural communicative approach uh, to the past, or how the past is communicated, how the meanings of past are transmitted and how the representations are created, uh, shared representations of the past are created. And then many books were published which tried to deal not just with the 1940s, but with some other periods of, of, of Latvia's history. Namely, there was a book published, uh, or two books published, uh, 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 that dealt with the revolution of 1905, that was an uh, important turning point uh, in Russian uh, empire in Tsarist time then, but it also was extremely important for the Baltic states, I think, at least for, for Latvia, which wasn't Latvia then. Uh, it was a very important event in terms of civ civic freedom or civil freedom and also in terms of resistance and, 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 and a national identity, the revolution of 1905. And therefore there were two important collections of articles published. Uh, this, the one which is on the left side, that's a collection of articles. That's a collection. But another one was actually, it tried to trace, uh, with the, pro the idea of project was to go, uh, go or try to collect as many as possible visual evidences of the traces left in Latvian memory landscape vis-a-vis uh, -vis the revolution of 1905, namely all monuments, different commemorative plaques, uh, commemorative sites, and it's actually a book which consists basically of pictures. There is one introductory conceptual chapter, and all the book is just pictures, and you know, it's like a bit different. It's sort of not so much maybe scho important scholarly as also as develop different language, how to speak about uh, memory, uh, collective memory. 
So uh, then uh, another, bo another book or another project, research project, which was uh, carried out in terms of this cultural communicative perspective was uh, uh, about uh, Carlis Ulmanis, uh, who was an uh, uh, important uh, man in Latvia's history. Um, in the 1930s, he also could be seen as an authoritarian leader of Latvia. And now, uh, since he is one of the most important, even now for Latvia's national identity, definitely seen as the most positive historical hero, although he was the one who actually dismantled democracy in Latvia in the 1930s. And therefore, it's very important, very interesting, and it's, it, it is interesting in terms of collective memory how this image of Ulmanis, how the memories of Ulmanis, although there are no direct memories anymore, uh, are transmitted and, and still are influential uh, uh, for social mobilization in society. So, and there are several books, one even in English published recently, Ultimate Freedom, No Choice, uh, uh, which, do, which, which, which focuses on the, this phenomenon of all monies. And then, uh, then also there was some research done on, 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 on Stalinist time and on post-war uh, life in Latvia. Uh, and also, uh, the, the book uh, on the left uh, is a collection of, of articles that deals with a, with a, and it tries to show how the discourses have been created uh, all over the 50, 60 years, not just focusing from the today's perspective, how they are communicated, the, the past is communicated, but try to show this art, like genealogy, referring to the to the name of the network, uh, genealogy, they try to show, or this ar doing this archaeology, showing to show how these different layers of discourses and how the, in, the representation of Stalinism has, has shifted and has been created all over these 60 decades or 70 decades. Well, seven decades. Uh, so, uh, and then also there is a book about uh, Soviet monuments and uh, uh, written by Sergei Skruks, Professor Sergei Skruks, uh, where he tries to use a very semiotic approach, but also you can see and, and read very much that it's embedded in this tradition of, of memory studies, and trying, or it tries to show this, the representation of past, the shared representation of past. So, uh, this, is a, this, this, was, this was this cultural communicative approach, and uh, there were also some attempts to expand or, or some trends of the diversification of this research field, like trying to break out of the 20th century, actually. Although, you know, Latvian statehood, more or less, or national identity can be associated with the late 19th century and with the 20th century. But some scholars, uh, for the, example, this book edited by Dennis Hanos, uh, they attempted to, 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 to go further or deeper, to go deep, to go further back in the past, trying to show also how this uh, meaning making uh, with respect to past uh, is carried out in Latvia in terms also of, of the 18th century. And there is a book in English uh, published, The Ge Geopolitics of History, of, in Latvian Russian relations, which again try to expand the field, try to actually go uh, deeper and try very, was actually, and the editor is a political scientist who is now actually the commissioner of uh, human rights uh, at the Council of Europe. And uh, then he was a scholar, um, Nils Moizniks. And also the book uh, by Inge Schwarzer recently published in Germany which deals with the transitional justice issues. So we can see this diversification uh, in, the in the past decade, definitely, in Latvia. And diversification also in terms of uh, conceptual divers diversification and sort of trying to uh, leave this kind of individual individualist approach to, to, to do the past. I see that I don't have m much time left, maybe five minutes. Who is the timekeeper, actually? Uh, five minutes? OK. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah. And then there is an important project which I want to mention uh, that is very important in terms of Latvia's memory, uh, social memory studies in Latvia. 
that the project which was recently finished uh, was three years project uh, supported by um, Latvian state uh, and um, state program uh, and the project was called uh, uh, social memory and national identity and that was carried out uh, also by Vita Zelce whom I mentioned uh, but uh, it was, I would say, not so, not any more so much this cultural communicative was not embedded in so, so much in this cultural communicative approach, but also very much um, focused on producing a applicable knowledge, where you could, you know, provide recommendations for policymakers. So it wasn't just, you know, very scholarly. It was scholarly, but it was not just for. To create the aim was not just to create fundamental knowledge, but also very applied, ready-made maybe knowledge, and that's of course always you know problematic, and that it like it was not sitting in the ivory tower, academic ivory tower, but was trying to create a bridge between policymakers or memory agents of pol uh, memory politics and and scholars. And there were several research, uh, several books published, uh, which I think, uh, cause uh, for the sake of time, I won't, won't maybe look at details of these books. But uh, just uh, these, for example, the one which dealt with two important, uh, with memory war actually in Latvia, an annual memory war in Latvia that is uh, related to two important dates, unofficial. Uh, days of, of observance. One is 16th of March when uh, so-called Latvian legionaries, uh, those soldiers who were basically 80 per, 85 percent uh, conscripted in the Nazi army and were uh, fighting in the Nazi, Nazi army then. And, 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 and 16th of March is a commemorative, unofficial commemorative day in Latvia. And then uh, 9th of May, which you can guess it's uh, the Russian um, in Russia and in Ukraine and Moldova also the official Victory Day. Um, I think in Ukraine it's even not called Victory Day, maybe. But uh, anyways, uh, these are two uh, controversial events in Latvia which really divide society. Annual annual memory wars in the media, uh, in society on 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 social media, you can see it, and it's like you know, for social social scientists is uh, like a Natural, a natural lab. You know, you can use it as a natural lab and see how how the memory. For you can trace the the most, or the the the, the freshest trends in memory in social memory. So um, yeah, and and another book, two two more books just to show you, because there were more books actually published in terms of this project. Because it was a really, I mean, the research team was was quite big. And, and it was it was a really it has ambitious goals and it was a very productive project, and it uh, initiated many discussions. It, for example, uh, tried to convince Lat President of Latvia, who is currently president also, there was official communication with the president who agreed, for example, to take important role for reconciling these both sides, Latvian legionaries and so-called Latvians who who were soldiers in the Red Army, and tried to play the symbolic ro role of you know, trying to come to terms with the past, to go and lay flowers together. And we were, I mean, the project, the project, uh, this project was, uh, or the, the people from this project were the ones who initiated all that. So it was like working with really with policymakers also, not just doing research, but it was really research-based initiatives. It was not like, you know, out of some kind of spontaneous reaction. It was usually research-based political initiatives coming from uh, social scientists doing, uh, doing research and social memory studies. And these are two books, one who was mentioned in the introductory uh, speech. Uh, this is a Soviet the commemoration of Soviet deportations, which is also very much uh, focused on, on, on recommendations and doing this very applied or creating this very applied knowledge. And another one is about uh, national partisans, which is a very important issue and has been an important issue in Lithuania. 
how it is commemorated in one particular region of Latvia. It's untold history. The book Neistas di Tavastura, the untold history, because uh, the author of the book uh, tries to understand how in Latgales region, whom I, which I already mentioned, the region where the national partisans were the most active, how they have been maintained, or whether they are, or actually she tells that there are vivid trends of amnesia. Uh, in that region, and there is uh, some kind of Soviet legacy prevails that in the Soviet time it was not, you know, it was stigmatizing experience, and they avoid they avoided to speak about this re in, uh, about the national the fights of national partisans after the World War II in that region, and that, that the author speculates that actually you can see this this kind of mindset even now. So, uh, and the last thing before I conclude. Uh, is an important political document, uh, the guidelines of national identity, civil society, and integration policy, which were uh, passed or accepted by the government in 2000, 2012. And these guidelines, why, they are, why are they important? They are important for one reason. There is a three main chapters or main directions how uh, the policymakers have envisaged to further societal integration in Latvia. Keep in mind that Latvia is a very complicated, ethnically complicated society. So, and uh, one of these directions is called very explicitly, the, not even politics, but social memory. So three, one is uh, language policy, another is, uh, mm, one was language, and as a civil society, uh, and third is social memory. It's called the chapter, full chapter, where, and there is also action plan, where it's planned many activities uh, concerning how to, uh, how to uh, uh, promote uh, uh, a social memory or, or, or memory, how to carry out memory politics which would try to reduce uh, this conflictual, yeah, conflictual, uh, problems uh, but uh, so to conclude uh, just few 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 things uh, first of all we can see that um, in the 1990s it's definitely quite visible that there is there was a reluctance to, t to challenge the legitimacy of post-soviet memory regime which was extremely anti-soviet of course but also very narrowly focused memory regime and then there is this interpretive turn uh, in, the, in the scholarship, um, uh, obvious interpretive turn in, 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 in the, somewhere at the end of the 1990s, where they switch from the individual experience to, towards more m collective memory work or collective actors. And then if I was to predict the future, I would say that in this decade, we will see this coexistence and, and, and of social, political, and cultural communicative approaches. I mean, more applied approach, which gives this kind of recommend, provides these recommendations for policymakers, and then more this kind of that's more focused on creating this fundamental knowledge. But it doesn't mean that they are necessarily mutually exclusive. So thanks. <laughs>